When the Titanic began its fateful voyage, it weighed about 52,000 tons. Now, how did they even get it into the water in the first place? Step 1. Find tons of soap and natural fat. Step 2. Dump it all over the ramp in front of the Titanic, like a monster slip and slide. They even put grease all over the outside of the ship to make sure it didn't get scratched, dented, or even rip open. Just like that, the Titanic plopped softly into the water, and the workers and owners breathed a sigh of relief. At least that part went well. When they built the Aswan Dam in Egypt, they needed to clear out a huge area for the new artificial lake. Almost 100,000 people had to move out of their homes. That was the easy part. Engineers now had to try to move two huge ancient Egyptian temples, or they'd be lost underwater forever. The answer? Thousands of engineers and builders. The temples were built into a mountain. So first, they had to detach it using bulldozers and jackhammers. Then they had to take it all apart, like a humongous Lego project. Statues, roofs, walls, sculptures, pretty sweet Lego set. Then they cut the temples into bite-sized bits, over a thousand of them. Each one weighed the same as three elephants. So where do they put it all back together? On the same mountain, just 200 feet higher. It took five years and about $300 million in today's money. I think even the pharaohs would have been impressed. Now, say you're thirsty, so you grab a glass of water. But where does that water come from? In Saudi Arabia, it comes from salt water. You just need to get the salt out, no biggie. That calls for an evaporator. Saudi Arabia's machine brings fresh water to 300,000 people. Not bad for so much desert. The evaporator weighs 5,000 tons, and it's pretty big, like 10 basketball courts big. They hired a special ship to bring it from Vietnam to Saudi Arabia. But even that was too small. After making the ship a little bigger and making a successful cross-continent journey, the evaporator finally touched down in the Middle East. Then it was easy. Just grab 30 tractor trailers and pull. Pretty impressive, but the largest thing ever moved on Earth is way bigger. Enter the Norwegian Trolle gas production platform. It weighs more than the Titanic and is way taller than the Empire State Building. But the engineers weren't scared, even though they had to drag the thing 120 miles from shore. They hooked up 10 powerful boats and pulled it along for a week. That thing cost $1 billion to make, so they had to be careful. The boats were actually pulling it in all directions to keep it steady, then slowly making their way out to sea. Once it got there, its four powerful legs were secured with concrete, about as much as you'd use to build 200,000 houses. That part of the sea can be quite rough, so they had to make sure it wouldn't move at all. Natural gas can set on fire, even in the middle of the sea. You gotta move out of town, but you're used to your house, your big kitchen, cozy fireplace. No problem! Take your home with you! About 500 years ago, an Italian architect was constructing the local city's administration building. But the local church bell tower was getting in the way. The solution? pick up the tower and move it. The architect built a wooden frame around the tower and shifted it using ropes, blocks, and a lot of people power. Since then, a lot of buildings have been moved around, but what happened in China changed everything. In 2004, engineers shifted the Fu Gang building about 120 feet. It was the heaviest building ever moved, but it only took 11 days. They worked day and night to get it done so fast. 10,000 years ago, a meteorite fell on Greenland. It was the only source of iron for the local people, who started breaking pieces off to make knives, harpoons, arrowheads, and even jewelry. Talk about good luck! Over time, the locals split the meteorite, named Cape York, into a bunch of pieces. Arctic explorer Robert Perry wanted to bring the biggest piece back to the US. So. How do you move 30 tons of space rock without trucks or paved roads? Plus, it's 1897 and freezing cold. It took three years, but he did it. He ended up building a railway with a special platform to pull it to the nearest shore. It was the first and last railway in Greenland. Perry sold the meteorite for $40,000. Today, that would be about a million. 
In 2012, artist Michael Heiser erected a 340-ton boulder over the entrance to the LA County Museum of Art. It was called Levitating Mass. Installing it was easy, getting it there, not so much. They had to use a 290-foot trailer and six different trucks. They only drove at night 100 miles through 22 cities. The most insane part? It ended up costing $10 million. The Swedish ship Vasa, built about 400 years ago, was almost a celebrity. People were amazed by its size, beautiful decoration, and gold sculptures. First time out to sea, it sank. Why? A gust of wind. Oops. Anyway, about 80 years ago, they decided to pull it out. One plan was to fill it with ping-pong balls and freeze it in a block of ice. But instead, they just tied some ropes around it and used 18 lifts to drag it along the seabed to a shallow area. From there, it was pretty easy to lift it out. It was mostly made of wood, not much metal. The ship survived quite well because of the cold seawater and even floated by itself. The shuttle Endeavour flew 25 missions into space. And in 2012, NASA decided it deserved a break. Its retirement home would be the California Science Center. The massive shuttle was loaded onto trailers and driven through LA at the amazing speed of 2 miles per hour. It was the first and probably last time that a spaceship would drive through a big city. They had to clear a pretty big path and ended up chopping down a lot of pesky things like lampposts, traffic lights, power lines, even over 400 trees. But don't worry, they raised a lot of money from the whole thing, enough to plant over 800 new trees. The Statue of Liberty wasn't built in the USA. It was built in France. After nine years of hard work and a serious amount of copper and iron, she was ready to be given to the United States as a token of friendship. Sending it by mail would take way too much bubble wrap, so they decided to ship it instead. The statue was cut into 350 pieces, loaded into crates, and shipped over to New York. It took them four months to assemble all the pieces back together. Talk about Humpty Dumpty. Meet Bagger 288, a self-propelled excavator and the largest land transport on the planet. This beast can shift thousands of cars worth of dirt a day. It finished work in one quarry and had to move on to another. Taking it apart, shipping it, and putting it back together would have been ridiculous. So it just drove over there. It took three weeks and only moved at half a mile per hour. To stop it from wrecking everything it drove over, engineers walked ahead, planting grass and covering roads with gravel and dirt. Now, you're walking down the street in France, see a couple of cafes, maybe a nice bakery, and the world's largest gas turbine named Harriet. Harriet's job? Keep the lights on in over 700,000 French homes. This mammoth turbine weighs as much as two jumbo jets and had to travel through France, Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands. Hey, let's go Dutch! The Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt is made up of more than 2 million huge blocks of stone. No trailers, no tractors, just some good old-fashioned muscle power. Each block weighs more than 2.5 tons, that's like 30 of me. These guys didn't even have strong metals like iron or steel. They mostly used pieces of wood and stone hammers.